uh, start things off with Flovatar. Luca, do you want to take it over? Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. And thanks for having me. And yeah, let me share my screen so that I can show you a little bit uh, what is Flovatar all about. Uh, so for those that don't know Flovatar, it started as a new take on PFP, but uh, it obviously grew uh, to become so much more than that. It's become now like a proper platform where people can uh, empower. We want to empower people's creativity to build uh, new uh, NFTs uh, with however they like and uh, with the combination they like and uh, how they, they see them uh, uh, more close to them and uh, how they they see themselves more attached to it. So instead of a randomized uh, combination like many other projects, what we do is that allow you to mm -hmm. choose exactly every trait uh, however you want it, and then uh, you will be able to uh, mint it and uh, block that combination that will be unique and will be uh, always yours. Mm -hmm. And then we have many other things uh, related to the flow mm -hmm. avatar that have, are the flow beats that are these accessories that you can uh, mm -hmm. wear, you can equip, uh, and you can uh, uh, swap them anytime. Uh, uh, we have more uh, common one, but then we have also legendary ones like uh, the Krampus mask that uh, uh, has its own uh, story. And um, yeah, people are super engaged uh, with the creativity of uh, Flowbutter. And the nice thing is that we will bring it further uh, to a whole different dimension. We introduced last uh, Sunday the 3D model. Uh, so it loads, uh, it, it we, we created a 3D model from every trait, from uh, any combination that you have, uh, and you will be able to download the, the high quality 3D model, 3D printed at home, and then uh, the next steps will be included in metaverses, in video games, uh, and uh, all kinds of places. Um, so this is really our main differentiator, but then obviously we will have uh, a whole world that we are building. One, it's the story world, uh, that we will start introducing. And then the big announcement that we made uh, uh, also last Sunday during the AMA was the DAST token that we will introduce more or less around the end of Q3. Mm -hmm. And uh, with DAST token, uh, we really aim to open the, the Flovatar world to the bigger uh, audience, uh, more people, and allow them to spend the DAST token, especially to create new NFTs, just like you see it in the builder, but instead of using Spark and Booster like you do now, you will have a price in Dust and you will be able to mint uh, uh, those new NFTs and then have the 3D models attached to it. Uh, you have all the other benefits. Uh, you will be able to stake it uh, and uh, so many more things. So yeah, I really recommend you to have a read through the article uh, where we outline also the big vision where we see ourselves in uh, three, ten years from now, and uh, how the distribution works. So depending if your flow butter is a higher rarity uh, or less rare, you will have a different amount of uh, dust every day that you can collect, that you can spend uh, in making NFTs, giving a name to your flow butter, uh, downloading the 3D models, and uh, many more things. Um, well, in this uh, office hours, I wanted to go in more details about something that I think could be also of inspiration to other projects. Uh, and I think we should try and explore more in general within crypto project and in the flow blockchain, especially. Um, and it's about this uh, prank that we uh, prepared uh, uh, for uh, one of our community members. It's Wild Turkey. And um, the story about uh, this prank comes from a long time ago. We have this great community member, Wild Turkey, that uh, has this uh, a little bit creepy clown that since the very beginning, he really started bugging us. <laughs> like, I would really like to have a red balloon to complete my character. Uh, it would be really nice uh, if I could have uh, a red balloon and he kept asking in every AMA, every activity we did, he jumped in, oh, have you seen my red, red balloon? And obviously it started becoming a big deal in uh, <laughs> in the Flowater world. He started making like a Flowater news uh, and he had comics uh, making pranks on me that I 
I wasn't giving him the red balloon. So we we decided to 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 fight back in a, in this in this game and have something that could be memorable and that would be just beyond uh, just making the simple NFT that he could wear and it's a red balloon and he knows he receives it and he's happy. So what we did is uh, we created a, a special flow bit and uh, we, with an excuse of uh, calling a town hall uh, meeting, we, uh, we grouped up all the community and uh, we announced to everyone that we finally managed to make the, a balloon for, uh, because uh, Wild Turkey was asking it so much. But the prank was that uh, we ran out of uh, red ink color, so we had to make it blue. And of course, you can imagine how puzzled he was and how <laughs> uh, conflicted he was because, okay, yes, he was receiving a, a gift. Uh, I sent him uh, the, the blue balloon as an NFT to his wallet. And of course, <laughs> being he's so polite, he said, oh, thank you, you pulled the prank on me. And obviously, Inside, he, he wanted to die, probably, <laughs> because he was so close to getting his red balloon. But uh, it was blue. And then when he actually equipped the, red, the blue balloon on his own Flovatar, he doesn't have uh, this mouth, but he has this specific mouth, that it's an epic mouth, that it's animated. And because he has this specific trait of the mouth, the red, the blue balloon detects somehow that the the original flow water holding the flow bit has this particular trait, and it changes his behavior to become from blue becomes red, and this applies only to the flow waters that have this very specific mouth trait. To all the other uh, flow waters, they will keep seeing it blue and only him or the few others, the 28 others that have this uh, particular trait will, uh, will make it become red. So you can imagine his surprise and while equipping it, uh, I say, what, what, what happened? It was blue and now it became red and, and I didn't touch his computer. He was doing it on his computer in his wallet. Uh, so I couldn't hack into his computer or uh, doing such a thing. So the, the surprise comes from the fact that one NFT can uh, change its behavior by being associated and combined with another. And the beauty of all this is that it doesn't need or require any extra JavaScript or to be happening specifically on the flowavatar.com website. Uh, because, for example, if you see uh, the same... Um, NFT on another website like flov.dev uh, or any other website that, uh, where you can see the Flowater NFT, this same effect will apply uh, because it's contained within the SVG image as a code and the full SVG image is stored on chain. So the actual prank, the actual animation and the interactivity part is fully on chain and contained within the SVG. And this makes it really powerful because you can uh, create polymorphic uh, NFTs that can uh, change depending on the surrounding, on the context, and who is holding it and when. And it gives them much more depth uh, and uh, also treasure hunting uh, uh, feeling because we might release new ones that uh, we won't announce what is connecting it to what and people will be surprised to find that eventually in that combination even a common flow bit might become something uh, super special and unexpected um, so yeah this is one more example where I think uh, it would be interesting to explore even more the, the SVG connected to the crypto world and storing it fully on chain because it has so many benefits besides being fully on chain and being guaranteed to exist forever as long as the blockchain lives but then also having this flexibility over images that also are not static because they are animated as you can see the balloon can move uh, we can make it interactive like basketball uh, that you can click and it jumps um, so it offers a whole different depth 
to the the visual of the NFT and it makes it become so much more interactive and it gamifies the NFT, uh, I think, a lot. And we are just uh, creating the f surface, really. Uh, these are just proof of concepts and we are working on creating many more and that basically all the new epic and uh, legendary flow bits are aimed to be this complex and even more. And we want really to redefine what an NFT can be. And yeah, we are super excited to keep exploring and uh, to keep experimenting and uh, to welcome any new suggestions or things that we can make and um, that we can combine and uh, yeah, and see what an NFT can become. Because uh, yeah, I think we can, it can be so much more than just uh, a simple image. And yeah, I don't want to take too much time for also from the other uh, talks. And I don't know if you want to have any, make any questions or if I should talk a bit more, just let me know. I don't know if you were following the chat, Luca, but the chat was going wild throughout your presentation. So oh. <laughs> everyone is super impressed. Uh, we were just silent, uh, but oh, very impressed. <laughs> And we do have a lot of questions, but before we get to the questions on the Slido, I want to leave room for anyone who wants to jump in uh, via voice. All right, then maybe we can pull up uh, the Slido questions and uh, cover them. So the first question is probably the most important one is what is the story behind the Krampus mask? <laughs> yeah, the Krampus mask, we released it uh during um, the holiday pack, just after the, uh, the, the soon after the, the Genesis drop sale to say thank you to the community. And uh, uh, Alex, one of the, our whales, uh, really liked it uh, particularly. And uh, he started collecting uh, basically all of them from the marketplace. And um, he actually now owns like a nine out of 10 uh, Krampus mask. And we have just one that remained in, uh, in the project because we, it was a giveaway, it was an airdrop, but one of the 10 wasn't delivered because the, the user uh, either, either didn't have the, the wallet for, for some reason, for, uh, it was not delivered. So it remained in the project. And we will probably put it in a museum or something. But now Alex has the, like a, a whole army of Krampus mask uh, flow avatars that he can use. And these are the things that we, we're going to uh, like a lot to include in the, into our story world, into the narrative that we still didn't talk about at all. Uh, but this will be a situation where like a Krampus mask army will come in and uh, will suddenly do something. So, uh, yeah, there are histories behind every flow bits uh, that uh, become popular based on the character. And yeah, this is a nice part of uh, flow Avatar as well. That's awesome. How like the community story influences the, yeah. the, 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 the whole lore, you know, a bit like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. It's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> Cool. Um, so uh, we have a lot of questions. So maybe for this one, you can keep it uh, super short. Why, yeah. why choose the name Dust for your token? Yeah, dust comes from uh, Stardust. So and, uh, we had the idea that with a little bit of Stardust, you can create magic. So to shorten it, uh, we, we went for Dust, but the, original com the origin comes from uh, Stardust. Yeah. Some... And also, we will explain it more in the narrative and the, the story that we're building. Cool. Here's a little bit more of a challenging one. Isn't it a waste of space and resources to store the same images and traits on each NFT? Uh, we store for each flow avatar, mm -hmm. we store separately the SVG for the combination. And I think it's important because on, within that NFT that it's the most valuable, you have the full image. For the flow bits and uh, the traits, uh, we don't copy it, the SVG all the time. We just store it once in the template. There is a separate resource called the uh, Flowvatar template, and there is one copy of the SVG on chain for every flow bit. And then if we have 1,000 copies of that single um, flow bit, it references the, the original template, but it doesn't copy it all, all over again. So yeah, we try to optimize that thing as well. Awesome. 
and maybe this leads well to the second question, which is what are your thoughts on composability? Um, and it would be amazing to see flow projects really innovate, but maybe we need a community initiative to help take this off. I mean, you kind of, yeah, uh, I'll let you answer. Yeah, no, absolutely. For us, yeah, we're pushing really hard in composability within Flowbutter, as you can see. So creating combinations and uh, different things uh, like the backgrounds with the basketball, etc. But then we want to bring it even further uh, by um, allowing uh, um, composability from projects to projects. So uh, we can have uh, like a mm -hmm. flowbutter within a metaverse that can do certain things within a context. So uh, you gamify also that part. And also in the article, we said we want to become the Lego plus Disney of Web3 in the sense that the Lego, because we want to create the bricks, the building blocks, and then people, by putting their creativity, by creating this uh, composing and putting together the pieces is what makes the difference and what really can, uh, can make everything uh, get a, a special feeling, special that magic uh, feeling. Uh, our our uh, job is really to make these building blocks as good as possible and as composable as possible to really empower and uh, yeah, make people uh, express their creativity at their highest potential. Yeah, and I'd also like to add that the composability is really um, a generic term, but you know the foundations for it are already here. It's just a matter of how they're being used, right? And you you just explained some yeah. some cool examples, but I think it's up to everyone to to make use of it and to to explore different ways to compose on top of each other and to kind of uh, yeah turn this into an interconnected web of cool experiences. Yeah, uh, awesome. Um, do you mind just briefly going a little bit? You already touched on it by when you were talking about flow bits and how they're, they're stored in their own resource and then and then referenced. But do you do you mind maybe covering a little bit on how the on chain logic is set up to make you know the dynamic NFTs possible? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So basically, uh, actually, maybe the easiest it's just to open the the code really to to show a little bit how we are composing. Cause you see here, this is the image of, uh, the, for example, the, um, the flow bit of the, the blue balloon. And you will see here, well, obviously there is some code that detects uh, other traits uh, within the flow water. And by detecting them, it can apply then uh, other uh, rules that change its behavior. And what we can do is mm, the really, it's pretty simple, the, the composability part. It's really simple because SVG being a text, we really have to chain the, the different components, the different flow bits. So this is the background flow bit. If it's, pro, uh, if it's there, we just add it first. Then we add the SVG from the flow avatar. Then we add the eyeglasses. Then we add the hat. Then we add the accessory on top. So you are actually layering things one after the other, just by concatenating a string. And that that is for me the most powerful thing. You can't do this with JPEG or a PNG easily, but with SVG, just concatenating the string and then adding like a a wrapper. You open and close the SVG uh, uh, tag. And just by putting the text one after the other, you have this ability to create layering as if you were in Photoshop. And this is uh, really what becomes, uh, gives the, the power to, to flow avatar and everything. Then of course there are um, the main uh, uh, um, function, it's the create uh, flow avatar one where you pass on the spark, uh, the boosters that you want to use, and then all the traits and how you want exactly to make your flow avatar. And of course, it makes a lot of checks uh, if it belongs to the same category and uh, if you have enough boosters and all kinds of things. And if everything is all right, it, um, it then creates the, um, the flow avatar and it burns uh, in the process the, the spark and the boosters that you uh, passed as a parameter and you will get back uh, 
um, the, um, the flow of utter and return. And we apply also the royalties within the NFT. So it, you will have the 1% royalties always attached to your address um, and will be applied to all the marketplaces. Hopefully they will uh, follow that rule. And um, yeah, I could dive more uh, deeper, even deeper, but I don't know if we have time. And No, this is super awesome. Unfortunately, we don't have time, but I would yeah. love <laughs> to dive deeper. Maybe yeah. one piece of homework for, for everyone is to go through the Flovatar contracts because yeah. uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things to learn there. Um, and, and yeah, and maybe we can have a dedicated session around, for example, composability and Flovatar, uh, given that we want to start having more technical focused content, you know, uh, in its own little time box versus having to fit everything into office hours. This would be a perfect thing to talk about, right? We can have an hour where we kind of go through the Flovatar contract and, and discuss like what best practices you found, what things people can take inspiration yeah, from. And, and given that you were also saying, hey, why don't more people do something like this with a dynamic NFTs? Well, that's, that would be a perfect opportunity yeah. to kind of showcase how it's done in more detail. Um, yeah, absolutely. I will show all the code uh, that BR Tech helped me build as well, because he's always <laughs> helping He is the everyone. foundation of the whole Flow yeah. ecosystem. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, Lucas, so much for, oh, for walking us through this. It was, thanks it was to really you. awesome. Thank um, you. Cool. All right. Uh